The following is a fourth hand production. Are you easily offended? Because if you are, you should probably stop listening. Are you interested in the bizarre and unusual? Are you fascinated by the grisly sides of life? Are you the one that people call weirdo? Well then, you should get hip to Strange Brew Podcast, a podcast with a bunch of crazy Canucks. Tune in every week with Strange Brew's host, Tomcat, a.k.a. Tom Thompson. And Billy Kirby, along with many different guests. As we drink booze and we discuss anything strange and paranormal, from serial killers to aliens and all of the above. So crack those beers and toss on those tinfoil hats because because it's it's about about to get get strange. Obsessed with UFOs and extraterrestrials? Convinced there's a chupacabra in your backyard? Is your doppelganger ruining your life? Do you love all things haunting related? If you answered yes to any, or none of these, then these are the mostly sensical, slightly drunken ramblings for you? Question mark? I'm Emily. And I'm Joel. And we're the host of Drink Drunk Dead. Join us, our two cats, Emma and Otto, and our house ghost every week as we have a few drinks discuss all things paranormal and and raise raise a a toast toast to to our our ghosts. ghosts you had to you had to do the dentist in like three days yeah that's right yeah i hate that i don't like being under that kind of pressure pressure is good for you pressure makes you who you are pressure makes your balls bigger What? No! You suck! Alright guys, welcome all back to What the Suck, episode number 13 for season 2. My name is Chris. And this is James. What's up, freaks? What's up, freaks and geeks and all you <laughs> dumb motherfuckers out there? Uh, <laughs> yes, we are We are back to another great episode, and by great, I mean shitty. Of course. I mean, great, great for us is a movie that's so bad that it causes us to <laughs> laugh. And cry at the same time. Damn straight. Damn straight. Damn straight. You will see no Oscar winning films on this program. No, lots of Razzies, though. You will hear none. You will hear no you will hear lots of about a lot of Razzies though. Yeah. But no Oscar contenders. No Joaquin Phoenix is up in this bitch. Nope. He can keep his PETA ass out there. Um (laughs) uh, so okay, so today's episode is the nineteen fifty eight quote unquote classic Earth versus a spider aka the spider more motherfucking spiders earth versus the giant spider but again it's just one spider a singular a spider singular uh it's a 1958 independent american black and white fiction horror film produced by mr bert i gordon whose initials spell big now <laughs> something about him a lot of his a lot of the movies he produced in in back in those times featured large creatures Fantastic. Which he, I don't even know if Bert I. Gordon was his real name. I think he might have, no, I think it was. But yeah, uh, his nickname was Mr. Big, B-I-G, um, you know, the uh, acronym of his name. Um, and it's a reference to both his initials and his preference for directing movies featuring supersized creatures. Yeah, luckily he didn't go nowhere near that uh, piece of shit, creeping terror. No, <laughs> no, no, he didn't. He didn't go near that one. That wasn't. That big, really wasn't that big. It no. wasn't big enough for him. No, because no. he he does movies like uh, the Amazing Colossal Man, War of the Colossal Beast, uh, Earth versus the Spider, Beginning of the End, which is about giant grasshoppers. Oh, sweet. giant grasshoppers. Sweet. Uh, he also did movies like Attack of the Puppet People, which um, yeah, The Boy and the Pirates. Yeah, Boy is and that the one of his movies? That is. Now, now you know what. <laughs> What do they say? You don't need x-ray vision to see what the hell's going on there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the director is Bert I. Gordon, as we said, uh, Mr. Big, uh, produced by Bert I. Gordon, written by Laszlo Gurag. Gu- Laszlo Gurag. Yeah. Uh, written also by George Worthington Yates. George Worthington Yates. Yeah. Oh. Oh, right, right, right. right, right. Blah, blah, blah. 
Starring Ed Kimmer, June Kenny, Eugene Person, Gene Roth, Hal Torrey, Sally Frazier, and June Jocelyn. Music by Albert Glasser. Cinematography by Jack Amurda. Jack, <laughs> Jack Amurda. Uh, edited by Walter E. Keller. Distributed by American International Pictures. Release date of September 1958 with only 73 minutes. Super cool. Barely an hour. Just just over an hour. Slight over an hour. Uh, with a budget of $100,000. Uh, the special effects were done by Gordon and a Paul Blaisdell. Um, it was released by AIP as a double feature with either the Brain Eaters or the other phenomenal classic piece of shit, the Screaming Skull. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love some of these names. I know. So what is this movie about, you might be asking, screaming into your headphones or your car, however you listen to this. It's about an Earth versus a spider. Thank you. Fuck off. No, it's uh, <laughs> eight arms to hold you, one mouth to eat you up. Earth versus a spider is a horror fan's dream and an arachnophobic arachnophobiacs is that oh my god okay <laughs> and an arachnophobiacs nightmare it's, now you need to leave that so you can't take that out oh that, that's what? staying in yeah arachnophobia is 50 style moviegoers had already been exposed to the horrifying giant ants and watched in terror as man became fly when earth versus the spider chambered on or clambered onto screens hollywood in the 50s knew how to <clears throat> bug everyone to death with oversized <laughs> creepy crawlies and earth versus a spider producer writer special effects superintendent janitor and food caterer bert i gordon the cyclops food of the gods was a master at the big creature genre quiet river falls is a town awakened to full fright by the mutant insects devastating rampage two teens discover the monsters see it ultimately oh see it temporarily disabled by a mega dose of D- ddt and ultimately are confronted by its eight arms of doom. Do our young heroes survive? God, I hope not. Find Me out. Me too. Kill them, motherfuckers. In the final confrontation of Earth. Now, wait a minute. Scroll up. Scroll the spider. up. I love this on the damn cover. Bullets won't kill it. Flames, Flames can't, hurt it. can't hurt it. And nothing, nothing can, can stop, stop it. it. Dun, dun, dun. No, we are not smoking anything. But no, not it's yet. just one of them nights. Not till later. Uh... <laughs> So, now let's talk about a rating system. Um, for those of you who are new to the podcast, uh, go listen to an earlier episode. You can hear the rating system on any of our Season 1 episodes. In deep detail. Yes. Uh, but suffice to say, we rate our, our scores on a reverse scale uh, full of shit emojis. Yep. Uh, one to five. One being the best of the worst. And five being the worst of the worst. Yes. Uh, one are ones that you will definitely want to keep and watch over and over and are are your good, bad classics. Yeah. Five being the worst of the worst that you'll watch once, maybe force your friends to watch, and then afterward you'll want to smoke something, take something, inhale something. And then walk into traffic. Walk into traffic and yep. just, just forget you even saw it, but at least you see it. <laughs> and why do we do that? Why do we even, even if it's a five, why do we recommend you see it? Because we are movie lovers. We love this shit. Good, bad, or I am Zozo. And I'm going to tell you, it is a kick in the ass. To get drunk and watch these shitty ass yeah. horror movies together with a group oh, yeah. and just cut up on them. It, it's yeah. a lot of damn it's fun. It's so much fun. And, and, you know, people, whether they, you know, they are the scam artists like Tommy Wiseau or whatever, they, they make movies, they have some sort of passion about it, and they put their heart, for the most part, up on the screen. Yep. And so we, we believe that. With the rare exception of a couple of sixes out there that we have <laughs> reviewed, sixes, by the way, means that we can't we can't recommend it at all because it's just it's bad. It's that bad, and it's a waste of time. Yeah, but otherwise, we feel that all movies deserve at least one watch. Exactly. Yeah. So and that's... and it's you know if the uh, like the Mystery Science Boys they do stuff like this all the time. Yeah. You know, and and I love those episodes. They're oh, absolutely yeah. hilarious. Yeah, and, and that's how I've seen some of these movies already because yep. these are all really bad movies that that are for more or less some of them are kind of uh, um, open market, or whatever. But um, what's that word? Not open market, but but free. Uh, there's no copyright. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, because the writers are usually dead or don't give a shit. But one of, one of the uh, <laughs> most recent ones we did, um, Hobgoblins. That was that's one of my actual favorite mystery science theater three thousand episodes. And it was actually one. not so. And that was actually no. a good fucking episode. Yeah, it was. It was a pretty decent movie, and and the MST three K episode is even better. So go check that out. 
Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's uh, we're about to uh, we're gonna watch it real quick, and then we'll come back and review it. We're gonna watch this arachno fuckery. So uh, we will see you guys in a bit. Yeah. I told them to bring me one, and I believe it. Oh, I can't say I blame you, Sheriff. But Flynn's still missing. Deep into caverns whose very air is putrefied by the stench of death. <laughs> they search ceaselessly for a missing man, or possibly a giant spider no one really believes exists, except the high school teacher who knows his science and his students. <laughs> There may be more giant spiders coming into the world. They may even be hatching from their eggs in some remote spot right now. Do you realize how easy it would be for them to overcome us humans? A horrifying spectacle. Its existence shocks and fascinates the world of science. Its gigantic claws capable of crushing a man. Or tearing a woman apart as if she were a fly. But nothing sends the cats like the presence of -of out-of-this-world horror. A heart-stopping experience that defies man's imagination. That shrinks every woman's skin with the tension of terrifying withdrawal, as if a thousand spiders were taking possession of her body. You'll never believe it until you see it. You'll never forget the touch of the spider. Okay, so we just watched Earth vs. the Spider. Yes, we did. Two things uh, right off the bat. First of all, it wasn't Earth. It was most (laughs) of a small town. Not even the entire small town. Not even most of it. Probably a small section of the the town. I think maybe 30 motherfuckers at most. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And then... Uh, it wasn't really versus the spider because the spider was doing just fine on its own in the cave until these fuckers came out and decided to mess with it. They always got to go poke the bear. That's right. So, so stupid. Yeah. You but know, I will say this. Yeah. Yeah. In typical fine 50s fashion, I absolutely love, love the fucking music. Oh, the music's great. The music's fantastic. Yeah. The typical no, all that bullshit. And... The dramatic pauses and all the dun dun dun. I mean, just everything that it's makes that, these older movies great. That, that theremin, like, <laughs> <laughs> and that that is always a a genuine pleasure. We start off with a man driving his truck through a very bad green screen. Horrible green screen. Yeah. It's like sitting on a fucking merry-go-round. Now, this is literally like a, like a minute and a half, almost two minutes of just uh, credits. Credits the great music. Hey, cool credits. Yeah. An awesome uh, glowing spider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pulsating. Yeah. And so uh, he, he's driving, and he's driving on green screen, and then all of a sudden he, he, he's looking at it, some jewelry, and then he sees something in the, in the, in the uh, street in front of him that we don't see. He screams. Blood splashes his face. That's it. You know, 19, it ni- doesn't matter if it's 1958 or 2020, distracted driving is distracted. not advised. That's right. Now it's texting and driving. Back then it was looking at jewelry and driving. Now it's looking it at jewelry. It's a big, big <laughs> looking problem Looking at a box then. and driving, yep. Yeah. And ran into what we later find out is apparently... A spider web. A spider web of some sort, but it looks like a rope. Yeah. So now we're introduced, then we go to the next day, and we're introduced to our main characters, Carol and Mike. Carol is the, the dude's daughter. Yep. And Mike is her dumbass boyfriend. Yes, correct. He, I called them George and Lorraine because they're about that smart. Yeah, they're, well, Lorraine was pretty, well, Lorraine was kind of dumb, actually, yeah. <laughs> she was, was pretty, pretty dumb, dumb yeah. shit. Yeah. George was no no, no smarter either. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, so they are, uh, Carol's concerned because her dad didn't come home last night. He was. Yep. He said he was going to get a gift for her, and he never came home. Uh, he probably went to leave with his his secret family, like they all had back in the day. They all yeah. had secret families in different cities or different states. They had different hoes and different area codes. <laughs> but uh, Mike's like, no, we'll, we'll go. We'll go look for him. We'll, we'll borrow my friend Joe's car, which is a badass car. It is. So it's, it's a roadster. It is. And it's a very good looking car. Yeah, and uh, so they go 
to look for him and they stumble upon the rope as we mentioned which is supposed to be a web line quote unquote you can't see it but i'm doing quotation marks <laughs> i'm doing air quotes uh it's supposed to be a web line but it's just a rope covered in grease yep and it goes from the tree out to the road and into the gully yep and uh they oh but before that we are we are treated to another wonderful scene of mike and carol driving through a, another bad green oh screen. Oh my god! I, I think they just set these people on a merry-go-round and spun it. I really was. I really thought I was going to see somebody like come up on the side of them running. You know. Yep. Doing the and whole... what was funny is you said no, that's the sound of the motor, but I was hearing a projector running. Yeah. They... It sounds like a fucking projector running, showing the the road going by in the background. Yeah. <laughs> and they're sitting it, in a. It's dim. supposed to be the motor, but it, it sounds yeah. real. I mean, especially that car. That car should have had a louder uh, louder motor. Yeah. Uh, so then they, they also find dad's pickup truck all fucked up. All dicked up. I mean, it is like, it is down in the gully and it's so bad that, that Carol doesn't even fucking recognize it. And dad is nowhere to be found. Nope. And, uh, so then they end up, they end up walking to and finding his hat over by this cave. Yep. And it's not just any cave. It's the cave. It's the famous Bronson cave in California where... Many shows from uh, actually 1909 uh, on up were filmed. Damn. Uh, many films like um, shit. What were the films that I, I looked up? Uh, there was a bunch of Star Trek filmed in this Star cave. Trek Four, Undiscovered Country, the Batman TV series and movie were, uh, were filmed there. Yep. Gunsmoke, um, a bunch of uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Was I even filmed think there. they said Lone Ranger Lone was filmed, was filmed in filmed some of there. this. Yeah. Yeah. So you, even uh, I think Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was filmed there. Uh, the American one, obviously not the Super Sentai Japanese one, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a very famous cave uh, that that uh, everybody films at because it's right there in California. And so they end up there, and they're walking through. Uh, they they end up there, and they see a danger, no trespassing, no trespassing, do not enter sign. Okay, one sign, three messages, and what do they do? And they walk on through. Why do they walk on they through? Get, it? I don't know. Because they're white, and they're they think, white and yeah. they're stupid. And they're like, Look. <laughs> Because Mike's like, well, this is danger, but we're not minorities, so we're going to walk on through that. That sign's for minorities only. Oh, so they just Lord. walk on through, and they, walking fucking forever, <laughs> all right, Carol is like, scre- Carol is nagging and screaming for her dad, and when that happens, a somehow loose stalactite falls from the ceiling, falls from the ceiling, almost hits her, proving that a woman's nagging can cave in. <laughs> can, destroy can destroy a rock formation. Can destroy a natural phenomena. Can 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 level mountains. Women's it, nagging can level it mountains. Res- it resonates at such a high frequency that it can crack stone yeah. and crystals. So women, e- even the earth, falls apart when a woman nags at it. Yep. Got to, you know, got to keep them from nagging. That's right. Quit them nagging. Yeah, so then they stumble upon... They stumble upon the extra storage for the spillet, spillet, the spirit Halloween skeleton costume closet. <laughs> because they stumble upon two perfectly white, polished, polished skeletons. skeletons. Yes, horribly done, and they're still connected. Yeah. Okay, and these things were supposedly eaten or whatever by a spider. Yeah. They're, yeah and there's, there's no webbing on them. No. Because I mean, anybody who's seen any type of spider documentary film or even hell, Lord of the Rings. Knows that a spider wraps up its prey in a web. Yes. And then proceeds to suck the juice out of it. Yep. But see, this is gloriously corny, though. Oh, yeah. I it's, freaking love it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's absolute, awesome. Absolutely corny. I mean, and one, one is <laughs> one of the skeletons, like, he's just chilling, laying back, like, on a recliner couch or some shit. He's just, like, he's having a good old time. He's just chilling. That's it. Then they move on into the cave. And then they boom. Finally. Yeah. And run into what looks like a cargo net. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's, it's again it's supposed to be a horrible giant, a giant spider web yes but, but yet they're able to crawl on it yeah and it's it just looks like again a cargo net covered in grease it does it looks like a safety net at a circus and that is when we are introduced about 15 minutes in we are finally introduced to our spider our hero and unlike the last spider film that we covered which was which was the giant spider invasion from 75. Right. Instead of, um, so this film's from the 50s, that one's from the 70s, and in order to get their spider, they used a 
car covered with a spider outfit. And I did make note of that. They actually used, in the foreground, I don't know how they did the filming, but they actually used a real tarantula for this movie. they did. Instead of a VW bug. Yeah. Yes. So they used they used a composite shot where they it was uh and they were composite and I don't think it was forced perspective though because they just they filmed the spider on a model set and yeah. then filmed the actors doing their actual thing and then just combined the two together very much like the old. Uh, they like, just probably run it on a giant screen in the background and everybody runs in front of it. Right. Exactly. You yeah, know. Yeah. So. They, just, they just composite together. <laughs> It's, it's, it's still being used to this day. The last time it was used was uh, in the movie. Well, not the last time, I should say. But the the most current example I can think of was from the movie Tremors. Uh, so the spider makes its entrance with a screeching that I thought was a fucking banshee. Uh, yeah, this is where I'm going to ask him to insert just a sound clip of the spider screeching yeah. if he can. Here. Yeah, so that is the spider <laughs> screeching. That's what yeah. the that's the sound that the spider makes every time it's on screen. <laughs> it's horrible, but it's so funny. It's hilarious. It's how how horrible it is. And again, it's it sounds like a woman screeching. So once again, we are treated to women nagging nonstop in this movie. <laughs> so they they manage to escape thankfully because the spider is is slow for being so large. And then they head back to what I affectionately always call the customary living room meeting between usually the top brain in the movie, an ignorant sheriff, and a couple of other huckleberries, and some, and Actually, the two dumbasses who witnessed whatever the fuck. And the, they sheriff, have, the sheriff wasn't in there. Well, it doesn't matter because... <laughs> yeah, usually he is, though. But yeah. Usually he is, yeah. Well, usually he is, but yes, but yeah. we get this whole... You know how you get the the, the science guys all... Yeah, they go back to the science teacher, his house. Yes. And tell them about the spider. And and, and the science teacher hearing... They they bring a sample of the the rope silk. I'm going to call him Professor Exposition because he's the guy that gives away the whole fucking movie every scene. That's perfect. Yeah, so that's perfect. I mean, he, (laughs) he, 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 he sees the silk... The giant silk. He he hears them telling telling that they saw a giant spider in the cave. I get that they're kids. I get it. Whatever. But instead of believing him or saying we need to call, you know, go see for ourselves, he decides he wants to call the sheriff because the sheriff somehow, for some reason, is the go-to for all of these giant monster movies. <laughs> Well, of course. Even though it's always a small podunk town. and He's, he's got, like, a... the one gun in town, though, see? Well, well I mean, well, no, because later on there's a whole fucking mob with, like, a whole posse with, like, dynamite and shit. But he arms them. Okay. I oh, think, they get it. I, I, I think he gets them all from him. But, yeah, you're right. But the sheriff, the sheriff's not going to do anything against a giant spider, even if there's not one. You, you... <laughs> Don't call a fucking sheriff. Yep. So they call the sheriff and... and, and Who's like 83 fucking years old, oh God, by the way. He's an old bastard. He looks like he's Gary Busey man. at about 85 years old, I or think. Or Gary Busey Something now. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Gary. So the sheriff tells the deputy to round up a posse of about a dozen people. Uh, and of course, when they when they see the posse, it's all white people. Yeah, go get Joe Bob and Jim Bob and yeah. you know Jeff Rowe and... and Go and get Harry and go get all the white people in town. We don't want no non-white people, no minorities. <laughs> this is a posse. We're trying to get us a spider. Uh, you, you, you gotta love the you gotta love the fifties. I mean, this, yeah. Well, he's right. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's not a. Uh, well, let's it's, just never mind. Yeah, it's fifties. Anyway, <laughs> so so the uh, the the gang, or as I call them, the clan, go in and. <laughs> Shit. They go into the cave and they find the dad drained and mummified, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, cool he, little effect. He's jerky. Yeah, and of course the, t- the sheriff is a typical smartass the entire time with no clue, just you know mocking everybody. He's he's not helpful at all. And so when they find the web, the, the sheriff then orders them to spray everything down with DDT. Yeah, let's hose. Let's let's fill the cave. With a deadly chemical, yeah. to where there's no real good ventilation. I feel like this is like a, this is like an anti DDT film. You yeah, know? like they're trying to show you the horrors of DDT. Even though we have no idea how the spider came to be this big, we don't know if it, <laughs> if it's an alien spider, or a mutant spider. He just is all of a sudden there. But I feel like it's kind of like Godzilla, where like nuclear nuclear uh, radiation created Godzilla as a sort of like a. Uh, you know, after the whole Hiroshima thing, Absolutely. it was like the horrors of, of nuclear radiation or yeah. 
nuclear bomb it's, is what created Godzilla, which is like Japan's monster, which whatever. This is kind of like this one, like the DDT one, where DDT is going to cause your your spider to get giant <laughs> and live in a cave. I don't know. But they spray everything out with DDT. They're sitting there hosing this fucker down, and he, he, you hear the screech again. Here she comes. And there she goes. There she goes. And they're, and they're, they're spraying her with DDT <laughs> and firing at her at the same time. Yes, and that is fucking stupid. Because it, it looks like a fire hose going. Yeah. Uh, screaming, and they start shooting it, and it just kind of casually flips over. Yeah, it flips over like it's dead. Like it's dead. But. I think it just got really, really I fucking think it was high. super high on DDT. <laughs> and I just, all of a sudden, I, just for some reason, I hear, like, the spider just going off, like, Tommy Chong, and be like, Dave's not here, man. That's right, dude. Wow, man. But we should have realized we should have realized the audience should have realized that the uh, spider's obviously not dead because when spiders die, when they do die, they do go on their back. Yeah. But then all their legs, legs curl, curl up, up because yep. their body dries up. Exactly. But we can't forget, we do get our first actually on actual on screen kill. Well, sort of. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you saw dad get some blood on his face from the broken window, but you didn't see anything after that. This guy, gets jack slapped by the spider before it flips over and you barely you barely even see that you see him screaming you see the arm come towards him and then the next thing the spider flips over and they they cut back to the guy and he's i mean it's bloody. like an italian backslide ah shut up and just Ugh, yeah just, and, and he's all just bloody and he's dead and he's bloody and dead yeah, yeah. the eyeballs are gone there's not a, not, a, not a large <laughs> kill count in this movie either it's, it's no really, it's really small so there can be only one never mind that welcome to the juan on juan podcast I'm your host, Juan. I know that was a mouthful. But join us while we talk about a variety of things. Life, business, maybe some conspiracy theories. Who knows? Just sit back and enjoy the ride. We're going to answer all your lifelong questions. Like, is it okay to shave your balls with the same machine you use on your face? I don't know. Anyways, follow us on social media. Instagram at the Juan on Juan podcast. Catch us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher, where you can catch our weekly episodes. See you soon. Uh, so what do you do when you kill a 80-foot spider, Chris? Well, of course, you drag it out of the cave and take it to your local <laughs> high school. <laughs> Stick in the auditorium for everybody to see. That's take pictures right. of. So Absolutely. So also let's let's bring up the point that up to this point, all the, the spider has always been a composite shot. It's been you know the spider on on a model as we mentioned, and then you know the actors do. It's, it's like the original King Kong. It's the actors doing their part, and then the spider part is projected behind them or whatever. Tell me this. Hmm. It's about an eighty foot spider. Yeah. How the fuck did they get it out of the cave? They don't bother telling you that. No, 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 no. But it just shows up in the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has morphing abilities like the creeping terror monster does, I guess. I, I think, don't know. I think so. But the, the, all the effects so far are really good. Not For the 50s, I mean, for the not 50s, bad. For the 50s. Really and, not bad. And, and the technology they, they had to use, and they used a real spider, which is always better than like a puppetry spider. Absolutely. Natural um, movement. Yeah, exactly. Like you can tell when something's real versus something's a, a bad yeah. puppet. But like even even the flipping over of the the spider, which it does, it, it's you know it's it's the, the special effects are great. I think They're they really had great. it like in a glass tube or something. But it was a real spider mm -hmm. that flipped over, and I think they yeah. just rolled it over. They rolled it over, and then they just took like a single shot, and they they, they took a single still shot, and they used that shot as as its death pose the entire time yes because obviously you can't keep a spider um <laughs> unless you kill it but then if you kill it the legs go up but you can't keep a spider on its back um for long so they just took a single shot and that was a the shot they used for it but then they put it in the gym like you said gym. everybody's going around looking taking pictures doors locked shit. doors locked they won't let nobody in yeah and then what happens these guys come in here and they say hey man you know come on man let us in dude yeah so it's another, another, old... another group of whites or another clan as i call it <laughs> they're complaining yeah. because they can't get into the gymnasium because yeah. there's a sign that says no admittance so they call the janitor over like look janitor this, this sign that says no admittance this is not for white people please let us in this is, this is to keep out the minorities okay <laughs> god damn so the janitor who looks like tommy lee jones lets him in <laughs> old ass tommy lee old, jones or, or now tommy lee jones yeah um so when they get in 
They get in because not only they they want to get in to look at the spider, but they want to go practice their There's band. An Eighty foot dead spider <laughs> in the gymnasium, and they want to go. They want to go rock out. <laughs> they don't want to go practice their shitty ass rock and roll music. The typical fifties progression 50s. rock. Yeah. <laughs> so then also the drama nerd show because there's supposed to be drama class in that auditorium as well. <laughs> and when the drama nerds show up, they get all freaked out. But then the the band band people are like, "Hey, you know, close the door, come in or out because we're practicing." There's a fucking spider <laughs> who gives a shit. A huge fucking spider in there, and they, they, let's hold a fucking dance. Let's go in. So they start jamming, and all these idiots start start dancing. dancing. <laughs> Start dancing. It's re- completely retarded. And so because the, mu- the music is so bad, it wakes the spider up. Yeah. And he's pissed because he's got to hear this bullshit. And so he he, he wakes up, and then we're, but then we're treated to a really cool um, shot where the janitor goes to the phone outside the, the auditorium to call the scientist because he'll help him. And we're treated to a miniature of the, of the front of the gymnasium. Yes. With a sign that says recreational room. And and what you said, scra- Scrabble letters? Yeah, it looked like the, 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 the letters for the recreational room were made from Scrabble letters. I mean, you can tell it's a mini model. Yeah, but like they, they use a mini model because they're they're, they're showing um, the spider uh, busting through busting the fucking through wall. <laughs> like you, you don't see the spider busting it. You just see the outside of the uh, recreational room uh, and you see the wall start to push in. So and it but, falls down, but it's dark. Yeah. So apparently it just knocked down the outer wall. Who knows? Right. But uh, yeah. But anyway, pretty spi- stupid. Spider's gone. But uh, at that time, the janitor gets killed. We don't see him get killed. It's off screen. He just crouches down in the corner. But yeah. there's a fucking door right there. Why didn't he go out the door, Chris? Yeah. Why? Why did he? Why did he? <laughs> why did he go into that phone to make a call? Why did he go out the outside fucking building and make a and call? Make but call. no. Yeah. Let's exactly. stand right here. Because I didn't get paid for, I only got paid for about 10 minutes of movie. Yeah. So I need to die. So yeah, you see him do the typical, ah, and he crouches into the corner. He did. Yeah. And then what I call here, spider havoc just completely ensues. Yes. Crowd running around. But what's funny is the spider is broke loose in the town. And this fucker, and I think they use the same shot like six times of the spider going by. Right. And everybody's just walking around. Casual. Like the, the fucking eighty foot arachnid running around the fucking town, and they're just strolling along like. Well, and, and they've got the sirens going off, and then when the town finally realizes what's going on, then they all, they all evacuate. They all run the hell down the street to get. Finally, the hell out of the... yeah, and it took like what five minutes of the movie before people realized, you know, what was going on. Even yeah. though this hulking ass big ass spider, spider was <laughs> eighty foot spider, which is bu- bigger than any of the buildings in that small town, and they just tooling by, and they're just, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, and and and. and you you after well <laughs> while that's happening while that's happening you get a shot of the scientist who's at the sheriff's department sheriff's office he's standing in the doorway dumping more yelling, of the story yelling no he's yelling at people to get out of town but he's not telling any of them to come into the sheriff's office and hide inside the jail cells. He's, he's like, just, yeah, he's take saying, cover, take cover, but you can't come in here. Yeah, don't come in here, but get the fuck out of town. Don't yeah. come in here, though. Yeah. <laughs> so then we're treated to the quote-unquote aftermath of the spider oh, yeah. rampaging, which looks like a hurricane, more likely. A couple mailboxes knocked over, there's we trash see, in the street, a couple dead, dead body. bodies. Yep. One dead body, I saw. And then one little muddy... Yeah, they have a scene with like a little kid, he's like six... If and that. No, if he was like toddler age. He was tiny. Like four or five then. Yeah. But like he he apparently, he was supposed to be a victim. So he's like crying and he like, he's on the ground. He stands up and he's got blood on his face and on yeah, his arms. Yeah, he's tore up looking. It's but like, like, damn. As, as soon as he stands up and starts crying, they like immediately cut to a whole different scene. So it's like they they thought about putting that scene in and then realized how horrible it is from the 1950s and then just decided to edit. But they yep. still kept that I mean, I was surprised that I saw a bloody ass kid in that movie. So after in this movie, after that, yeah, you, know, you see that. But then you see Bill Nye, the science guy. He actually gets in his ride and takes off around town looking for this fucking spider. Oh yeah. And to my pure enjoyment, yeah, he is actually driving a 1958 Plymouth Fury. That's right. Car was brand new. Mm-hmm. I'm talking Christine people. Yeah. Now it was black. But that's a badass car, man. Well, I was like, I mean, holy shit. The cars, the, the movie's in black and white. We have no we have no idea what color it was. That's true. It could have been a dark red. It could have been a dark green. Oh, 
Sweet. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just looked black. Well, anyway, this is the part, I think, that made me and Chris just fucking die laughing. Spider's tooling down the street, and he's sitting. <laughs> oh he's, this God, lady's this sitting lady. in, the, in the living room with a I, kid. I, I think it's a scientist's wife. Is it? A, yeah, I it is. So. He's so, going back to his house. That's right. Yeah. The, so the he's going there. shows up there first. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. He's walking by. You see him out in the street walking, and they're in there eating. Yeah. The mom and the kid are mom eating dinner. The baby. And that spider stops. <laughs> Looks in the window. Looks in the fucking window. And then you're, you're, oh, it cuts shit. away to a, a, a wide shot. It's kind of like, what you got the in there, man? What you got? And the spider has stopped, and he's just <laughs> chilling, looking in the front, looking in the window of that house. And, <laughs> and it's I, obviously, I don't know why it hit me so hard, but it was just funny the way the spider, because I was like, I was like thinking about myself, I was like, looking in the window, looking, and it stopped, and I swear it looked, you saw these eight eyes go into the fucking yeah, window like that. But like the, oh, what, man. what I thought was funny was the, the, the wide shot, the outside shot of the spider like stopped just at the kinda, house. And this was a real spider nestled on a little model. Yeah. And he was just sitting there. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, again, it was a still, a still, a still picture yeah. that they took and just put it in there because. Yeah, because it didn't really, move. Didn't move. And, but it, it was just, so it was just fucking chilling there. It was oh, like, it was it was hilarious. Like, hey, hey, what you got to eat? Can I have some? You got, yep. some, you got some grits there? And it's just, it's there for like, until the, the scientist shows up and then rams it with his car a couple times. And makes him chase the mother. <laughs> yeah. And chases, and, and gets him to chase him out of town. Uh, but then his car goes off the road and he loses a spider. The spider goes back to the cave. I guess he got bored or whatever. And then, but, yep, after he ditched the spider, he comes back into the sheriff's office. Yeah. And he's got old Tommy Lee, yep. the janitor man. Janitor man, yeah. The dummy str- oh, he, he did live. That's right. He did live. Oh, no, no. no. Nope. That's right. He, he made brought, jerky out of his he ass. He made jerky out of the, the janitor. So he brings in this fucking dummy and he goes to put this put the body on the fucking desk and it rolls off of his like it bounces it it roll it i mean it's horrible it rolls out like a carpet there's no bones it's obviously (laughs) foam yeah but all all this time we we forget to mention that while this shit's going on carol and mike go back to the cave yes they do she's going back to look for the jewelry that she dropped because she had it initially after she found it and then dropped it when she saw the spider she wants to go find it so uh, they go back and they're in there the entire time while the, the town's being evacuated. This box is two inches square, folks. Yeah. And they find it in they a dark it. ass cave. They literally find a, a <laughs> needle in a haystack. And while the town's being evacuated, while the spider is trying to get some grits from the lady, all this shit's going on. <laughs> Mike and Carol are in the cave looking for this fucking box. Oh, so shit. Then the posse shows up with dynamite. Because they're gonna blow the cave closed because they just can't deal with it. They can't kill the spider. And George and Lorraine got themselves lost in the cave because they took a wrong turn. Right. And, and so they blow the cave and then and then they realize that oh they're in God. the cave. How the fuck did they know? So then the last part of this movie, the last like ten minutes of the movie are just just the scientists and other people trying to dig the people out of the cave. They dug through several uh, probably a hundred feet of rubble. Easily in like a night and, and like Fifteen hours. minutes with two picks. Yeah, yeah, but they so. So they eventually get in there, <laughs> but then they have like this giant electricity, uh, uh, these rods that they they want to use to shock the spider. Yes, and so uh, Mike's able to get one, and the scientist has one, and they're across this cat, this, this like a uh, this chasm where the spider all of a sudden appears, climbing the quote unquote climbing the wall, climbing a a silk thread on the wall. Yeah, but. The spider is climbing the wrong way. So these fucking people, <laughs> because everybody everybody who's uh, older than fucking four knows that a yeah. spider produces silk through its abdomen. Yeah. And wait, is that right? Abdomen or is that? It's like out of the, ass. the rear. Yeah, abdomen is your no abdomen is your chest. Well, the abdomen is the that's the big part the in the part. back. But okay, so he, he still he, the silk comes out of its ass. Same science class, motherfucker. So whenever you see a spider coming down. It's coming down head first. It's coming down head first, swinging by its ass. Right. This fucking thing, they they couldn't get it to do it or whatever. So <laughs> spider, they, they spider tied was a like, string. This ain't my contract, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, he's, he's like, union rules say I'm not doing this. <laughs> so, so they lynched the motherfucker. They tie a, they tie a string around its waist, around its middle section. Oh shit! And it's crawling 
they're making it look like it, the silk it's is not, coming it, from its mouth. But it's not even touching the wall. It's no, just it's like not. dangling in midair, and they're lowering it down. It's like this poor spider lower dangling on a damn rope. It's like you said, they, they tied a string around its waist, yeah. apparently, and we're lowering it down manually. <laughs> and and then so the then the, the scientist and, and, and Mike shoot electricity at it, which causes it to fall, which means that the stagehand just let go of the string and, and the spider fell. And then they get out. Then they blow up the cave. The last shot that we are treated to is a badly composited shot of the spider upside down. Horrible. With, with a stalactite coming through its chest. But a fitting demise for our foul arachnid fiend. Yeah. And that, and then the movie doesn't even have ending credits. It just ends. But what's funny is the spider's not really the bad guy here. No, he's not. The people whitey. are the bad guy. Fucking yeah. Whitey, man. Fucking he goes in there fucking with, the, you know, these, fucking with his neighborhood. Yeah. And they, they drew him out by fucking with him. These they honk- should have just left him alone. These honky motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, thinking they run everything, you know. But yeah, so. so oh, it, lordy again, lord. We re- reiterate that it's not really Earth versus a spider. It's. It's a small section of a small town versus the spider, but I guess that was Pretty too much. long of a title. Yeah, and they, they couldn't. You can't call... say bunch of huckleberry motherfuckers versus the spider, right? Or like White Town versus the spider, or like <laughs> you know Mayberry versus the spider. I guess it doesn't have the same ring to it, you know. Oh Lord! So, and it wasn't really. I mean, it, I would understand if it's versus the spider if like. Okay, even the spiders in the giant spider invasion caused more damage and more death than this one did. Absolutely. This and one's... and like I said, they fucked with it first. Right, exactly. And that's why I come out of his hole. He's like, hey, fuckers. Yeah. So, uh, in, in a movie, um, I actually loved the hell out of this movie. Me too. I it was it. extraordinarily I entertaining. the music was great. I thought, you know, it's it's obviously of the time frame, whatever, but... The, the special effects were good. I, I enjoyed the use of life. I mean, but the thing is, um, Bert I. Gordon, again, all his monster movies, they all use uh, giant creatures. creatures, but they're all yeah. real creatures. Like the beginning of the end is about giant grasshoppers, but they use actual grasshoppers, again, composited against them. Absolutely. Um, yep. So I, I love it. I always appreciate that more than them trying to do like the puppet or whatever. Exactly. Or and the, to the, me, the, the it... bag of carpet from that one movie. What did we watch? What was it? The Creeping Terror? Oh, The Creeping Terror. Holy yeah. shit. Funny, but God awful. Yeah, it was terrible. Terrible. But I love the music. Uh, I, thought the, I thought the acting was perfectly fine. I thought the script was okay. I thought the special effects were fantastic. I thought the settings were great. Um, the story was, I mean, it, it was, it was rushed. I mean, it was an hour and 10 minutes. It was rushed. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of exposition. I actually did not even care. I thought it was really, I thought it was better that we knew nothing about how the spider got that way. Yep. Didn't know if it was radiation, DDT, uh, if it was an uh, alien, if it was mutant. We knew nothing. All we it's know. like you didn't give a shit. You yeah. just, you just, you go to a cave. Oh, it's a big fucking spider in here. Holy shit. Yeah. It's there. It's you just piss there. it off. It comes out and goes after your town. Yeah. So I am going to give this a two. Nice. This is a two for me. Watch it again. Watch it over. Watch it with friends. Play a drinking game. Put put the play the mustache game and only drink when it lines up with the spider. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. Because there's a lot of good opportunities for that. Yes. Uh, oh, that's funny. And, that's... and uh, yeah, I, I, I think this. I mean, I mean, this is a 1959 movie, but this is better than some of the shit we watched recently. Yeah. Yeah. What 58, about you? fool. Who gives a shit? What about you, Jay? <laughs> Well, I have I cannot agree with you more. The music was fantastic. It is the ultimate in corny horror music. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's charming. It's funny. It's a lot funnier than I thought it would be. Yes, I I mean, yes, they use the good, you know, the uh, live shots against the backdrops and stuff like that. Right. But all in all, this is one of those very charming, witty, uh, fairly well acted Good story. I mean, yeah, for the times, it was fantastic. And it's not even that long, so you won't yeah. waste any time. Yes. It made me laugh a bunch of times, yeah. especially the fucking peeking in the window part and shit. I I'm mean, actually going to go one higher than that. I'm giving this one a one turd. I, mean, I fucking love this movie. It's only an hour and ten minutes. It's, it it's is. It's not going to waste any time watching now, it. People watching be like, what? One ter-? I'm telling you, yeah. it's delightfully charming. It it's is. funny. And you know, and it's just so corny. It's great. Yeah, it's one of those ones that's so bad. It's great. Yeah. You know, this. I mean, this probably even shouldn't be on our list, but it's it's definitely a one. I wouldn't say well, it's, a zero. it's it's probably forgot. We could list this as a forgotten, a forgotten rather one. than a really shitty one. 
because sometimes those forgotten ones are gems, you know. And this That's one is an aw- this is an awesome movie. Yeah, it's a great point. This is definitely one of the forgotten ones. I mean, it's... and our Mystery Science Boys did a did a spoof of this one too. Yeah, I think didn't they? They sure did. I think I'm gonna go watch it. Yeah, I think I am too. So, <laughs> and, and before we do that, then let's go ahead and uh, James. Where can they find us on social media? They can find us on Facebook, of course, under What the Suck Podcast. We are also on instagram under what the suck if you search for us you got to put the underscore between the words but if you do you'll find us just like that yep we are also a proud member of the awesome fourthhand.com network yep lots of good shows Great lots shows. of good people lots of good shows Go and we're, we're adding more all the time apparently I just, absolutely just we're growing we're, by leaps and bounds we're adding like one or two more apparently so we have we have a ton of shows on there i mean our our shows on there our other show uh state of fear is on there as well my boy jp show not today satan's on there yep uh his other one stoned uh no uh his friend that's his friend stone eight but his other one uh earthling alien is on there yeah tons of different shows and they run the gamut and we have a show about the brady bunch we have a show about coin collecting. Yep. I mean, we have shows from all over the spectrum. Absolutely. And it's great. There's a good variety. And like I said, these are really good people. Yeah, so they are. Give them a shout out. Uh, go give them a follow and a like. You know, uh, We're also on uh, CastBox. Cast as always, Box, Google, Google Podcast, Spotify, any of the major you ones. You name it, uh, we're out there. Yeah, and uh, on RedCircle.com, you go to RedCircle.com, you can find our web, our podcast there. Um, and we have recently migrated to YouTube. Yes, finally, I believe our first season is on YouTube, as well as the first three episodes of State of Fear. Sweet. So you can go find those out. And speaking of which, State of Fear is our other podcast where James and I every week discuss a different topic from a different state. Uh, usually something that's uh, kind of spooky or crazy or scary, whether it be serial killers, cannibals, uh, weird disappearances, unsolved mysteries, uh, or paranormal stuff, aliens, UFOs, uh, ghosts. Big, cryptids, big man. Feet. Lots yeah. of cryptids. Giant spiders in, in uh, <laughs> you know. Giant spiders in caves getting fucked yeah. with. <laughs> yeah. We discuss all that shit. Um, so, yes, go check that out. State of Fear podcast. You can find it anywhere as well. Yep. Um, and uh, where can they follow you if they want to? If they'd like to follow me, I am at James E. Bishop the Third on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. I am at James Bishop I I I. All right. I couldn't use the three because some fucker took it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So then, until next time, um, I'm looking forward to our next shitty movie. Absolutely. And I'm Chris, and I'll see y'all at the next suck fest. Yeah. And this is James. And if it ain't on what the suck, it ain't shit down with Whitey. (laughs) You've been listening to a fourth hand joint.